Okay, it looks like we have quite a lot of people um, in here already. So um, we'll just wait for a few seconds more just in case there's anyone else that's joining and then we'll get going. Okay. Um, Right, let's make a start. Um, and then if anyone else joins us, um, they can catch up. So, um, hello, merhaba, uh, nas welcome. Um, I hope that you're doing okay. Um, hope that all of you are staying safe and you're staying healthy, um, even in these difficult times. It's really great that we can meet together via video chat um, and find different ways to connect. So, um, welcome to this Oxford Brooks webinar. Um, Hopefully you've heard of us before. If you haven't, um, I'm about to tell you a bit more about it. Um, my name's Lucy and I work in our global recruitment team at the university. So some of you perhaps have met me um, over the course of this year or maybe even previous years um, when I've been traveling to Turkey and um, going to events and meeting you in um, BEB offices and those kind of things. So um, if I've met you before, hello again. If I haven't, um, you're very welcome. So today I'm joined also by another colleague. So uh, my colleague, Patrick. Um, Patrick is based, um, works for Oxford Brooks, but is based in um, Nigeria normally. So I'll just let Patrick um, give a quick introduction to you as well. Uh, hi everyone, Salam. Um, nice to meet you all, or nice to eat, yeah, we meet you all. Um, I'm Patrick, um, like my colleague Lucy said, I'm based in Nigeria. Um, I look after Africa for the university. Um, but just it was a nice idea to um, um, see other um, faces from other parts of the world. Um, I'm happy to engage um, with you all today and I'm looking forward to having a great session. Great. Um, thank you, Patrick. So we'll move on. Um, and what I want to start with is just talking about our location. Um, throughout all of this webinar, if you have questions that come up or you want to just drop a little comment into the chat box, do feel free. Um, what we'll probably do is just save those questions until the end. Um, so we're going to have some time for Q&A. Um, but we'll, if there are things that come up along the way that we do, we are able to cover, um, obviously we will do that too. Um, so I don't know if any of you have heard of Oxford or if you visited Oxford before. Um, maybe some of you have visited the UK. Feel free to pop it into the chat box as well if you've visited um, Oxford before. Um, so Oxford is, you can see hopefully on the map, we're in the south of the UK. So um, we're actually one hour away from London, so very convenient location. Usually students do want to know how close we are to London um, because, yeah, it's a really great city to visit. Um, but Oxford itself is also a beautiful city um, and hopefully something you'll be able to discover for yourselves um, if you're able to join us um, to study at Oxford Brooks. Um, so we, yeah, the connections we have to London, um, you can connect easily by bus or by train, um, and those will take you into the city um, in the day, in the night. So you don't need to worry about being stuck um, overnight in London if you don't want to pay for London accommodation. Um, you can come back to Oxford, no problem. You can get off the bus right outside the main campus. So it's super convenient, super easy for you to do, and also quite a cheap option. Um, Oxford itself, you've probably heard of Oxford University. Um, so Oxford University is obviously very traditional, very old um, university. Oxford Brooks is the second university in the city, so we have two in the same place. Um, and what that means is um, it, we actually are a very student-focused city. So one in four adults living in the city are actually students. So we have loads of activities that are focused on um, students. Um, also, it means our learning opportunities, our opportunities for cultural development um, are also really abundant um, and a really great way for you to do some additional things outside of just your studies. Um, the benefit that we have with sharing the city with Oxford University is that our students at Oxford Brooks can actually use some of the famous Oxford University resources. So one of these is the Bodleian Library. I don't know if anyone's heard of the Bodleian Library before, maybe to type it also into the chat if you've heard of it, Patrick's heard of it. <laughs> so you can't see it in, um, in this picture, but it's just behind um, in the little bottom circle you can see on the presentation, 
just behind there. That's the Sheldonian Theatre and the, the Bodleian is just behind there. Now this library is really famous because um, they have access to every book that's ever published. So um, it's a really great resource for your learning. Normally just open to Oxford University students, but as an Oxford Brooks student, you can also use it. So um, that's a fantastic benefit that you can really take advantage of. Um, the other thing that is really beneficial about sharing the city with Oxford University is that you can join the Oxford Union. Um, now the Oxford Union is a kind of debating society. Um, so they often have lots of guest speakers um, and sessions that are led by people who are very well known in their industry or in their field. So it could be a politician, um, your local MP or government MP. Um, it could be a CEO of a company, somebody who owns a big business or a charity, um, somebody who works as a professional at the top level of their field. So they get some very good names and you can access that as an Oxford Brooks student as well. You can get membership to, um, to join that and to join the sessions that go on. So that's really great for you building up your networking opportunities. It will help you with future career opportunities which we'll talk about later so there's so many reasons why that's a great thing to get involved with. Also just mentioning on the career side um, not many people know but Oxford is actually a centre for industry and enterprise so um, there's a lot of job opportunities um, around the area a lot of companies are, have offices and bases around, around Oxfordshire area so not just in London lots of people think that London is the hub for everything um, but there's a lot of industry that takes place around Oxford and Oxfordshire. Um, one example would be, um, in particular, Formula One. So if you're interested in motorsport engineering, um, Oxford and Oxfordshire is the Formula One belt. So it's the area where you're going to get the most job opportunities. Um, and the same with a lot of the sciences as well. There's a lot of science industry. So it's a really good place for you to get work placements um, and have experts from the industry come and actually teach you during your course as well. So lots and lots of benefits to Oxford, as well as the fact that it's just a beautiful city and Patrick will talk a bit about that um, in a second. Here's just a few facts. I won't go over all of them. Um, but as I mentioned, because we have two universities in the same city, you might be wondering what are the differences between the two? What makes Oxford Brooks really great compared to Oxford University? Um, so one of the things that is um, a great fact I think about Oxford Brooks is um, we are actually the top modern university in the UK. So when we say modern, it means that we're less than 50 years old um, it, as a university. So as a school of arts, we're a little bit older. But as a university, we're less than 50 years old um, and we're the number one in the UK. Um, and we also have global recognition for lots of our um, subjects as well. So maybe when you look at rankings, you might have seen overall university rankings, but maybe you haven't seen the subject specific rankings. If you're going to check the ranking, I would really recommend that you look at your subject. So um, for our subject areas, particularly areas within built environment and architecture, hospitality, publishing, the arts, um, we have really a lot of um, top programs that are considered to be amongst the best in the world. Um, so those are some those are things to consider as well. Um, as you can see, we have a really high employability rate um, after students graduate. Again, that's something we'll talk about a bit more um, later on in terms of how we help you to get a career when you graduate. Um, and we also are very international university. So Oxford as a city is extremely international. Um, so a third of everyone living in Oxford was actually born outside of the UK. Um, at Oxford Brooks, about 17% of our students are international students and they come from over 140 countries. So Turkey is just one of the countries where um, students join us and we do get a good number of Turkish students who come and study with us every year as well. So I'm going to hand over to Patrick and he'll tell you a little bit about the facilities, campus and also um, about student life. Yeah. Thanks Lucy. Um, so just like my colleague said, um, a student life at Berks uh, is, is, is one of the most important um, aspects of, of, of the journey you start. Um, from when you walk into the BEB offices um, to when you find yourself in Oxford. Um, it's interesting that I used to be um, a student at Berks and so I've, I've enjoyed each and every one of these facilities um, highlighted on the screen. Um, Headington is, is three major campuses. There's the main campus, which is the Headington um, campus, then the Headington Hill, 
And then there's the Master in Road Campus, which is where I studied, because I studied the public health course, and, that, and, that's, in the, and that's the school for the health and life sciences um, and programs. Um, on the main campus, you have the Career Center, which is just right in the John Henry um, Brooks Building. Um, it's a resource center for students who um, are looking for work placements, uh, who, are look, who are looking to do um, a future after, after, after uni. So quite an interesting um, a resource center. If you find yourself at Brooks, please make them your friends because they're the best um, sets of people you would want to engage with when you study at Brooks. Um, the medical center, really awesome, really hands-on, happy to help at every given opportunity. Uh, speaking as someone who has used it, I'll tell you that it's one place you'd want to go to if you have any form of um, medical challenge. The sports center is just, um, literally what two minutes walk list um, from the main campus so you can have every form of sports engagement you want um, and you can keep fit while studying so which is nice because you need your body to be able to accommodate the rigors of studying um, on campus which is really really tasking speaking from a student perspective a lot of hard work but interesting at the same time because you have all the support you need one of the best parts of Oxford um, is how connected the city is. And the Brooks Boss uh, um, service uh, covers literally every end of the city. So I mentioned the three aspects, um, and the, the three campuses in Paddington. You have the Harcourt Hill campus and then the Whitley campus. Two extreme ends, well connected by the Brooks Boss service, and they all go via the Headington campus. So you don't, uh, you don't really have to worry so much if you if you have to be at the Headington Hill campus or, or the Maston Road or Harcourt Hill or Whitley, you're all connected because the Brooks Bus Service, absolutely fantastic. One of the best things, like I said, about Oxford, besides its connectivity to London and, and the airport. Um, right at the Headington campus also, you have the colonnade, the bank, the store, the bookshop, all and everything you need to have a proper campus life. So the stores have got all the snacks, even right within the Headington campus, John Henry building, you've got little stores, the daily and, and, and all the little things you can nibble on while you study. One other interesting but, um, um, bit of Brooks is the student union. Now as a student, I'll tell you, as a former student, I'll, I'll tell you something interesting. Um, as part of a team who formed the Public Health Society at Brooks, and this is one of the other major societies you have in the university where students actually come together from all walks of life, um, all nationalities together, um, um, just having an excellent time. When you get tired of studying, you engage in one of these societies, you'd have an amazing experience. Yeah, just to kind of add on to that. Um, so we have over a hundred student societies in the students union and they are run for students by students so that's another way that you can actually even um, kind of think ahead to how this will look when you're looking for jobs if you've been the president of one of the societies or the secretary of a society and um, that's already a kind of even though it's a voluntary position it's a kind of job that you can um, that shows that you have organizational skills and can take initiative and all sorts of other things that are linked into that so it's not just through your course that you can get those types of skills. It's also through getting involved in things like the Students' Union. And it's a great place just to make friends and to try mm. new ways. Um, I mean, there's a few, there's loads of different societies, aren't there, Patrick? And if there's not one that you want to join, um, there's, you can always set one up. Um, exactly. There's yeah. a new one. There is a Turkish society um, and on the campus as well. Um, but there's other funny ones like Disney or Tea Society, um, Formula Student. And, um, mixology, loads of different types. So there's something for everyone, I think. Absolutely. Um, the next slide, please. world is moving faster than we expected. Some, uh, <laughs> technical issues there, um, <laughs> going, going forwards rather than backwards. Um, so yeah, accommodation, um, I'll just briefly mention this. Um, so firstly, the, the most important 
important thing to know is that if you're applying to the university for the first time, so you're going to be a first year student, either first year undergraduate or first year postgraduate master's student, um, you're guaranteed a place in one of our halls of residence. Um, so just as long as you have an offer, so you've applied, you've got your offer and you apply for the accommodation before all of our deadlines, usually for September intake, that's around July that we're expecting you to apply for your accommodation, then um, we will guarantee you a place. Um, how the application works is you normally get five choices of accommodation and then whenever you meet all of your offer conditions and you get an unconditional offer, we'll confirm to you which of your, which of your choices you've got. Um, if we're able to place you in one of your top choices, we will. If you meet your conditions a bit later, you might get one of your top five. Um, it might not be your first one, but they're all fantastic places. Um, we've got around 10 halls of residence at the moment, um, one of them specifically for postgraduates as well. And they are dotted around the city. So as Patrick already mentioned, the city is really well connected, not just by the Brooks bus. The Brooks bus is free to use as well um, with your student card as well. Um, but also it's very easy to walk around the city. It's very easy to cycle. So it's kind of known as a cycling city. Um, and yeah, the halls are accessible from anything from a five minute walk up to maximum about 40 minutes walking. Um, but if you don't want to walk for 40 minutes, you can hop on a bus or you can get your bike um, and get a bit of exercise that way. So very easy to stay connected and everything's included. Um, most rooms are en suite um, as well. And then you'll be sharing your accommodation in a flat. So you might have um, your own bedroom space, perhaps your own bathroom, but you'll have shared facilities for socializing, for cooking. Um, and I think lots of students would be very happy to find that they're sharing a flat with Turkish students because they're hoping that you can introduce them to new cuisines and they'll be able to teach them some new recipes and things. So um, certainly something that you can bring um, and hopefully you'll have some other people with some good cooking skills as well in your flats. Um, so all of the information about the accommodation, you can find it online. So on our main accommodation webpage and also on our YouTube channel, I would really recommend that if you're looking right now at your accommodation. So you can do a virtual tour of every single option that we have and it will just give you a little bit more of an idea um, about the accommodation options um, you can also see the prices on there so because they they vary quite a lot i won't go through all the prices here but do have a look on the website and you can see the length of contract the yearly price the weekly price um, all of that's online yeah so just to add to what my colleague said about accommodation it's always nice when you share accommodation with other nationals um, um, she, um, um, Lucy mentioned um, the bits about you know sharing cuisine, cuisines um, from every nationality, and it's a really nice um, way to stay engaged as a student. You know, when you share different types of food, keeps your taste buds really, really active. So something I would encourage um, um, first year students, especially, um, to hop on once they have the opportunity. Now. Um, Student life. I don't give a general overview about what um, student life feels like. Like I said, um, the journey for um, the becoming a student at Brooks um, starts from walking into the BEB office. From the BEB offices, you find yourself in the JHB building for the Fresh Fair. So, from the list of societies Lucy has been um, welcoming international students, home students, and every single one of us, um, it's a really nice time because you get to meet um, new friends, get to meet people from the same country as yourselves and just get to connect and get to build relationships that can last, well, depending on the, on the length of your study, one year, three years, two years, and, and all whatnot. So quite an interesting fair. Um, um, over 100 societies there, external societies join as well. So really nice, engaging time. I'll tell you one little story. So when, um, when we started the Public Health Society, uh, we didn't have anything public health-wise to put up. And so I took my friend's TV and my PlayStation 4, and I, 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 I made some little coins for the local charity, and everyone paid a coin, um, a pound, um, to play um, FIFA. It was FIFA 15 at the time, and which was really nice and highly appreciated by the department at the time. Um, besides the Freshers' Fair, there's the Careers' Fair um, for um, job seekers and those who have to get in, um, involved with um, placements during the course of their studies. Now, these career fairs are organized within the, the campus, but by external um, employers. They come on campus, get you engaged, get to get a sense of um, how much or what you can bring into their respective organizations and you know, 
they encourage you to to make applications and possibly take you up um, once you meet the standard requirements that they need. Um, students um, socialize in different forms. Um, examples like the African Caribbean Society, I, I just, the first one that came to mind, um, used to have movie sessions, for instance. Within the Oxford Union, you have um, uh, community sessions going on every, every now and again, where students come and just have a good laugh and, and ease off from all the stress of studying at uni. So um, one, that, that as, as, um, as an international student and as a fresh at uni, I would always encourage, no matter how tired you are, no matter how tasky you think the week is going to be, try to avail yourself at the freshest fair because, like I said, you get to meet other nationals from your country, you get to meet um, students who are already on your course and who can, you know, take you under the tutelage and encourage you as your, as your course progresses. So really nice one for um, all our prospective students to get on. Within this city, um, Oxford is a very architectural city beautiful. Um, I don't want to sound cheeky, but that's what, isn't one of the most beautiful places I've been on planet Earth. It's really nice, welcoming, um, just nice, refreshing air outside. You study at Oxford, you have easily one of the most brilliant um, um, experiences of your life. The Ashmolean Museum is just right there in the city centre. Every single form of art, the galleries, theatres, movie theaters as well for those who want to you know keep the saturdays and sundays busy when they're not studying um you can also explore the city by pointing in the local rivers just down the road after the south park you can also go to south park to get some air really nice vast area of green land nice place to just get along have a conversation speak some turkish if you want um, and just you know have a nice engaging time um, the course walls are like uh, nice, you know, um, let's say village areas around Oxford. Nice country view, beautiful place. Another really nice part of Oxford, Cowley Road. Yes, Carnival. For those who want to party, oh, that's the place for you. You go there, you can have the, the Cowley Road Carnival. Nice session, beautiful place, wonderful place to be. Um, but generally, in all as a student at Oxford Brooks and within Oxford as a city, you are you are not far away from the closest you can get to reality as as a student and as someone who lives in the city. Patrick, yeah, um, I think there's yeah there really is something to do for everyone um, as a student in that city. So um, I'm a bit of a, a culture nerd, so um, I love going to the museums and to the galleries. Um, seeing a play at one of the local theatres and um, those kind of things but also you know if you're not into that kind of thing there's there's plenty more to do plenty of bars and restaurants and um, there's a fantastic Turkish restaurant as well if you can bear to have Turkish food while you're here you might be missing it loads um, and I've got it on good authority from several Turkish students that it is the best Turkish place in the city and that's called uh, Antep Kitchen or Antep Kitchen um, but there's a few more as well around the city so you can do a taste test yourself perhaps when you come and see which one is your favorite um please take me there next time i visit <laughs> um, yeah i will take you there yeah. um so just moving on quickly to uh faculties and departments um just to give you a bit of an overview about the courses that we offer as you can see um we have quite a lot um of on on offer at the university so we have four main faculties, so the Business School, Health and Life Sciences, Humanities and Social Sciences, and Technology, Design and Environment. Um, within these, there's lots of different schools and departments. You don't really need to worry too much about them, but what it shows you is just the types of programmes that we do offer. Um, so our Business School and Hospitality School, um, they're, they're very, Business School is probably one of the biggest schools that we have. Um, a lot of courses that they run um, majority of them offer a sandwich placement. So sandwich, we're not talking about what you eat for lunch, but we're talking about um, having a placement year, a work experience year integrated into your degree. So if you're taking an undergraduate degree, you would study for normally three years. If you want to take the sandwich mode, then you study for four years. So years one and two are on campus. Year three 
um, you'll be working with the careers department to find a placement opportunity and work for a year, hopefully with a salary as well. So some students can earn up to £25,000 for that year. And then in your fourth year, you come back to the campus and you finish off. Same, it works in the same way for postgraduate, except that you do your first year taught masters and then your second year, you'll do a placement year. Um, and then you graduate at the end of that. Both times in terms of your visa, your visa will cover all of that. So you just need to make sure that when you apply, you apply for the option with a placement if you want to. We normally recommend when you're applying that you do that anyway, even if you haven't decided if you definitely want to do a placement, just because it's a bit easier to make your visa a bit shorter to curtail your visa than it is to make it longer. So if you've got a four year visa and then you decide, I don't really want to do my placement, you can just cut it short after three years and stay on campus. So there's no pressure to have to go ahead with it, but that's just a, a little tip that I would recommend. Um, in terms of our other courses, so um, health and life sciences, um, particularly popular on our Headington campus are the biological and medical sciences. Um, and you can do work experience with those as well. So working in labs, and I already mentioned, Oxford is great for science research in particular. Um, I know there's a lot of interest in psychology, so I'll just touch pre uh, briefly on the psychology course. Um, you will find that psychology looks quite similar at undergraduate level in lots of universities. That's because um, they have to fulfill certain criteria for it to meet the accreditation. So that means for, because it's got an award, a stamp on it from the British Psychological Society, it has to have a certain amount of content that's the same across all the courses. Um, but we do make ours a bit different. So we give you the opportunity in your first year to get involved in research projects that normally first year students wouldn't have the opportunity to get involved in. So that's quite exciting because you can join some of the academics in the subjects where they're really getting into um, new areas of development and you could be part of a team that's researching something quite new and exciting. Um, you can also focus on developmental psychology, so learning um, about how linguistic um, development happens, those kind of things. So we have our very own baby lab. Um, we have volunteers that come in and they bring their babies and we can do tests on them using our eye tracking machine. We can test their response to stimuli and those kind of things as well. So it's, it's quite an exciting department to be in. Um, and then if you want to do it a postgraduate, what we offer is a, is a conversion program for postgraduate. So if you haven't already studied psychology and you decide you want to do a master's and maybe take it a bit further, you can come on to our conversion course. And that's a way for you to get that British um, Psychological Society accreditation that you need and then go on and do your clinical doctorate after that. So it's a bit, of, a bit of a different process in the UK for psychology as it is in Turkey, but there are ways that you can do it at both levels for undergraduate and postgraduate. And um, just moving on to the humanities department. So again, we have um, quite a range from education programs to languages, English and communications, um, law programs, our school of law um, has at the postgraduate level, we have international law, human rights, um, a lot of different focuses um, and you can take part in a lot of practical work with these as well so pro bono work client interviews and um, those kind of opportunities to make it a little bit more hands-on and then lastly technology design and environment and um, that's uh, I would say the, fa the faculty that's really really popular particularly in Turkey um, so we have a lot of students who are interested in our architecture school and um, we have Reba accredited programs for architecture so Reba is really what you need if you want to continue the qualification process in the UK as an architect um, or even elsewhere it's an internationally recognized qualification. Um, we have a lot of different options so at undergraduate we've got architecture and interior. At postgraduate you can take part two um, which is the two-year course or you can take different specialisms within development or um, regeneration and lots of options there. Um, we've got fine art programs, engineering, motorsport, mechanical, automotive, um, computer science, artificial intelligence. So as you can tell, there's loads of different options. So do check out the website to find out more. Um, if you also go on our YouTube channel, and I know I've mentioned this before, but we really do have quite a lot of resources on there. And we have some specific videos about each of these courses. So you might be able to go on there and find a course about a student who's done a business program and you want to find out more, chances are we might have a video on the YouTube channel, which, which is an interview with a student or a student telling you about that program. So it's a really great place to look at. 
Um, I'll move on to Patrick now so he can tell you a bit more about the work placements, some of our accreditations and careers that you can go into. Thanks, Lucy. Um, so if you can see the banner behind me, um, the, the key message on there is never stop dreaming. And, and that's, that's, that's the feeling you get once you come to Oxford. It is a city that gives you the room to dream and to build the kind of life you want going forward. Um, Lucy mentioned about the visas that cover um, study as well as work placements for students who want to pick the option. Um, and for students at Brooks, because Oxford is well placed um, within the UK, close proximity to London, as well as within the Oxford area, um, Oxford Brooks students get um, preference when it comes to placements um, in a host of courses that were offered at the university. And the mentorship program from Experts of Industry is one I've benefited from um, as a former student at the university, where you have um, big players within industries come to give talks and encourage students um, within the, the particular departments and faculties um, in which they study. Um, and you can always get all these options via our um, um, study and online portal and um, the careers department, um, the career services team, um, just like I said, uh, within the Headington campus at the John Henry building um, is there to guide you through um, applications to these um, industries and, and to areas of placements of choice for students. But then uh, places where students have excelled and have, have had the placements in recent time um, is, is Apple, which is the big one. Um, and BMW Mini here has got this massive plant within the Oxford area, um, just, just behind, I think, somewhere County Road. I used to cycle around the area in the past. Uh, I hope I can find my way there now. Um, F1 Ferrari. Uh, sometimes I see this and I wish I was a student on the motorsports program because then like, it's so exciting. However, and I did, one can argue to say, but Ferrari is based in Maranello and they've got the Ferrari World in Dubai. Um, but then again, you see, we also have um, so many other, I think there were six um, Formula One teams within the Oxford area. So there's still a lot of room for you to engage. Ernst Young also one of the big um, players in the industry, um, offering placement to our students, Four Seasons, Grand Total, Mars, um, Microsoft, PepsiCo, and Warner Bros. So these are all big players within um, their areas of um, of specialty and they've um, had we've had our students who've um, done the placements here in these places um, we have students who've gone to other countries as well for placement here for like a month or two um, within the business faculty so um, really interesting um, as a student to engage uh, and that's what Oxford Books brings um, um, to you within the accreditation bit you can see it's a whole lot of them so from Reba to um, Amber to Institute of Hospitality there's a whole lot of them um, and the university, as I said, and as Lucy has said, and she will continue to say, um, it's a university that is there to support you all through. Um, like I said, from start to finish, up until when you find yourself in the, the dream job. So um, don't stop dreaming. And yeah, let's dream together. And, and let's have you all the way. Great. Yeah. Um, and just a note on the accreditations as well. So what that means is it's a professional um, kind of qualification so it's, it's it's a professional body who's saying we believe that your degree prepares students in these particular skills um, that lead on to this particular industry um, so some of those below will be and um, maybe you recognize a few of them i already mentioned reba for architecture and um, acca is just one to mention as well so mm. if you're interested in accountancy accounting and um, you can take an acca qualification not just at the university but you can study in lots of different places um, any recognised institution offering ACCA programmes. Mm -hmm. We have an exclusive relationship, so Oxford Brooks and ACCA, um, so that you can actually gain an Oxford Brooks, Brooks degree alongside your ACCA qualification. So if you weren't studying um, on campus with us, you were studying somewhere else, you could still apply and get your bachelor degree in applied accounting alongside those qualifications. So there are a few different connections that we have that just open up more career opportunities for you. Um, so I'm just going to move on to entry criteria. I'm sure that's something um, you will want to know if you don't know it already. Um, so the good news for undergraduate students is we will accept your high school qualification, Alicia Dipamazi. So um, that starts usually at 70 percent upwards um, and then could be up to 80 percent for courses such as architecture. Um, there will sometimes be additional requirements. So um, sometimes there's a portfolio. So a lot of our arts and design based courses will require a portfolio of work. 
um, but also some courses might have an interview, particularly for maybe health related courses. Um, if you're taking a different qualification like IB, um, you can see there that we'll accept a range um, between 29 and 33 for your IB. Um, and then we ask you for IELTS 6 or an equivalent qualification. And I will come back and talk about that. But basically, um, just to reassure you, we don't only accept IELTS as your English language. There are a number of different tests that we can accept from you. Um, also, just to highlight, if you do have slightly lower results than that, we have foundation programs where we can also offer you a pathway onto your degree. So we've got most of our integrated foundations start at 60%. We also have one program that will start at 50% onwards and allow you to progress on. So there's different options for you depending on where you're at, where your level is, or if you feel like you need extra support through a foundation course. Um, for postgraduate, um, again, we'll accept your Turkish bachelor degree. Um, we would accept normally a 2.4 GPA for a lot of our programs. So a lot of our programs will ask for um, a second class um, lower qualification in UK terms. So that means 2.4 GPA. Um, in UK terms, second class higher, upper is 2.6 GPA. So um, that's the range generally that we're looking at. If you have something a little bit lower than that, um, we, we can sometimes consider flexibility depending on how much lower, but we do also have a pre-masters course that will help you to get onto the master's program as well. Um, and again, some of them will require a bit of extra work experience or portfolios, but all of that will be um, detailed on the website if you have a specific course that you're interested in. Um, now, I thought it might be useful just to give you a quick update um, regarding COVID-19 and just some of the things that we are putting in place um, and some of the things we're working on as well to make it a bit easier for you. Um, so first of all, um, we're planning for September. Um, we are, of course, still having discussions at the moment about how that will look. Um, so we, we can't give you a definitive answer just yet as to whether that will be definitely on campus, online or a mixture of the two, but we will keep you updated as soon as we do um, have that information for you. But we're planning to go ahead in September with some form of teaching um, in, yeah, in the autumn term. Um, what we are doing is to make it more flexible for you. Um, if you have paid a deposit already or you're thinking about paying your deposit now, and then at a later stage you decide you would like to defer your place to January or a bit later, or even if you need to drop out completely if your circumstances change, and we, we do understand there is a bit of uncertainty at the moment, um, we will of course be able to carry your deposit across to another intake, or if we, if we need to, if you can't join us at all, we will be able to refund you. So um, don't... Um, Please don't worry if you have paid a deposit already and you're worrying that maybe you won't be able to change your offer now, you won't be able to move it to a later intake if you need to. Um, we have got those flexible options in place, but hopefully that won't, it won't come to that. Um, but just, just to be aware that we, plan, we have plans in place. Um, and just also to touch on the alternative qualifications. So on our website, you can have a look at the qualifications we can accept for English language. Just to highlight a few, so we can accept TOEFL, um, including the home edition um, TOEFL test. Um, IELTS indicator is another one we can accept. So that's an online version um, of the IELTS um, regular academic test. Um, we can accept password, um, a password qualification. Um, there's not an online version at the moment, but if you've taken it somewhere else, we can accept password from a different um, institution. Um, and Pearson academic is another qualification we can accept. So there's quite a few different ones that we will consider instead of an ordinary academic IELTS if you haven't got the opportunity to take it. So um, if you think you've got a qualification we could accept and you're not sure, you can always get in touch, email BEB um, or email us directly and, and you know we can help you out and get you the answer. Um, when it comes to your final grade, we're aware that this will be a bit um, I think those ones are, we get a lot of student stories for a day um, and you can see it in the life of, um, but yeah, it's quite an interesting way for you to get a different perspective from actual kind of students that are on campus. Um, so here are my contact details and also BEB contact details. So as you know, um, we work with BEB um, and they are there to help you with your application. Um, in all of these different cities and also virtually at the moment, um, as I'm sure that you know. 
um, but you can also feel free to contact me. Um, we're going to now open the floor to questions. So I don't know if anyone has questions they want to put into the chat box. Um, I will just stop sharing this screen for now so we can go back to uh, the ordinary view. Um, but if you have questions now, perhaps you just want to put them into the chat box. Um, just type them in and we'll be able to answer them for you. Silence. We bored them to death. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope not. <laughs> so just as well to mention, I'm sure some of you maybe have this question um, and it didn't come up. Um, but in terms of the fees, um, so most of our tuition fees for undergraduate students range from uh, around £13,900 up to around 15000 for in, uh, international students. For postgraduate, it's around 14 to 16,000, 14, 15 to 16,000 pounds. Um, so we, compared to a lot of other universities, our fees are actually on the low side. Um, so you might be aware UK students currently pay um, over 9,000 pounds. So there's not very big difference between what UK and international students will pay. Um, in some universities, you might be looking at 18,000, 20,000 for a program. Um, so we try and make sure it's as accessible as possible um, for as many students as possible. Um, we do know that this is still quite high um, for um, you know, international students to pay, particularly given the exchange rate at the moment. Um, one thing that we did have, and I hope maybe some of you benefited from this, was we had an international scholarship. So it was a £2,000 scholarship that we were running for this year. Um, anyone who applied early and accepted their offer by April um, the deadline has now passed, but um, keep your eyes out for anything in the future. We're hoping we might be able to run similar campaigns and um, offer something similar in terms of scholarships for, for future years. Um, we'll have further confirmation of that, that more towards the end of the summer, the autumn time for next year and the years afterwards. Um, but just to, to give you a little bit of an idea. Okay, so we've got a question from Sev, sir. Um, about Cambridge University delivering their courses online. Yeah, so, so some universities are making decisions now um, to deliver courses online. I think Cambridge is the first university that has announced they'll be doing it for the whole of the year. Um, I think several universities have announced they'll be doing it for one semester. Um, we, we don't see that having a big impact on us at the moment in terms of Cambridge University. We're quite different universities. Um, so, you know, we don't anticipate there being any overlap in that case. Will we start seeing more universities offering 100% online courses in the future? Perhaps, but we do strongly believe at Oxford Brooks that there's a there's something to be gained in having the campus experience. So, you know, we're certainly not, it's certainly not in our plans to be moving at everything completely online for the foreseeable future. Um, if we need to make some adjustments for um, for this year, for the first semester, we'll obviously have to consider what our options are. But we haven't, um, yeah, we, we're not planning to um, to move everything online at the moment um, in, in terms of doing what, what Cambridge University have done. Um, we believe that we have a lot to offer on, on campus as well. Um, where possible, that would be our preference. Um, we'll have to see <laughs> how that pans out um, in the next few months. Um, just looking at another question here. Yeah, it's a question from Chan um, um, regarding um, um, uh, um, a master's course yes. and uh, conditions being too many to meet. Um, I think that that should be fairly um, um, simple. You just need to send um, Lucy an email and then she'll get in touch with the premises team and they can make an offer for the premises program. You don't need to make another offer, another application, I think. No, um, you just need to send in um, um, an email to Lucy and she can put you in touch with them. Um, yeah, I think that should just be about it. Um, yeah. 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 Just, just send me an email with the details of, um, of the application and student, um, that this is about and I'll, yeah, I'll help you with that. Um, just, just to add the premises starts um, next month, um, online. Um, so the, the earlier you get that across, um, the better so that the student can be well prepared, um, 
to 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 start the program once once it starts mm -hmm. online next month. Yes, yes. So we're running a pre-sessional English course and a pre-masters course online um, next month. So those are both options for you if you don't quite meet the language requirements and you, you want to do that course. Um, you can find options about that online. The application process is the same. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a chance for you to be able to begin studies and then you can use that qualification then to get on to your next um, programs. So whether it's undergraduate or postgraduate degree to September or later. Any other questions that you would like to ask? It could be about anything about university life, about um, the process, about what, you know, things that you're concerned about or comments you want to make. Ask us anything. Okay, it doesn't look like we have any questions. Um, we'll just leave it open and, um, for a little bit longer, but if you do think of questions that you, you maybe don't want to ask right now, um, or you can't remember what you want to ask and you, you remember something later, um, you will have our contact details. So you, you get in touch with BEB, BEB um, and they'll be able to get answers to any of the questions that you have, anything that you want to ask to us. Um, Patrick is, uh, is just here for today. Um, so questions normally will come to me. Um, but if you have things about Patrick's experience as a student, um, now's your chance to ask those questions as well. I just put Lucy's email on the chat box just in case for anyone who has very specific questions for her, then you know, you can just send that to her directly. Also, yeah, again, to you and you can send you out as well. And please, yeah, feel free to ask me anything. Um, Student life, and I'm happy to answer. Two advices I would give um, for for prospective students: first, get a bicycle, and to get a fitness tracker, so they can walk around the city and enjoy the aesthetics of Oxford as a, as a city. And the bicycle can help you to to cycle. And um, for those who want to do part time jobs while they study, that can also help you to get to your place of work while keeping fit at the same time. So. Yeah. Okay, so it looks like uh, we have um, all of the all of the information. Um, oh, one last. It's just Leo saying thank you to us. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so any if there are any other questions, um, I'll follow up. I'll follow up with BB as well to make sure that we've covered everything. Um, as I said, in terms of our plans for uh, September and for January, um, the moment we're looking at we're looking at confirming exactly what that will look like, whether it's on campus only, whether it's online, whether it's a mixture of the two. Um, but we'll have more information about that soon. Um, so we will we will give that to you as soon as we do have that information. Um, in the meantime, stay safe, stay healthy. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to learn Turkish before I come there next. Um, <laughs> it's slow, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we hope we hope that you found this a useful webinar session. Um, and yeah, we'll speak to you again soon. Thank you all, and thanks for giving me the chance to say hi to all of you today. Um, hopefully, I get the chance to visit Turkey, and yeah, I'll see you all um, hopefully in Oxford. Bye for now. Gule, gule. Bye.